Hi, welcome to the Jeff and Jerry Show. My name's Jeff, I'm the borough manager of Mount Pleasant, and my co-host... Jerry Lucia, mayor of Mount Pleasant. Well, for those who saw the previous week's show, um, we're back again with Robert for part two um, of the Levin Show, we'll call it, and about the uh, fact that he's uh, welcoming, coming back to Mount Pleasant. The town's going to be welcoming with a big party, I think, we're going to have. And uh, we've been talking a little bit about the history of Levin's on the previous show. So today we're going to do some more stories, because everybody likes a, sto a good story. And these two people here are used to be when Abraham Lincoln was around. So they, can, <laughs> they can talk about doing the furniture in the log cabins. But, uh, That's right. <laughs> but we're going to talk about the future also of Levin's and where it's at today versus where it was. So... Again, Robert, thanks for uh, being on part two here It's today. really great to be with you guys. Thanks so much for having me on the show. Okay, so let's, let's continue some stories. Jerry, I'm sure you have some other stories. I think. Well, you, you know, the, the Levin Furniture Store, I have memories that just go way back, you know. And I can remember walking in the store and you knew everyone that worked there, yeah. everyone. Because when they got hired, they were there for 30, 40 years. They didn't leave. Right. I can see your father, Robert, he'd be up and down the steps. He, and, oh, he never exercise. stopped. Right. The man never stopped. And he always had a clipboard with him. That's right. Like, yeah. you know, writing things the down. You know? yeah. And uh, your mom, oh, she was the decor, the, the decorator. She, she did everything. Yeah. She was the decorator. She helped buy you know she would go originally they would take the uh back in the days when the furniture market was in chicago they would get on the train in in connellsville connellsville do an overnight train and they would go to the furniture market uh she would write the ads do you remember her oh, white elephant yes, ads that, yes. uh, uh turkey ads where she would put a little poetry in and she <laughs> yeah. was really famous she, for your that. mother was a good writer and then she was strong she would carry, she would pick up the one, one end of a sofa and move it. So it's like, she was doing everything. The only thing she didn't do was install carpet. So now, but with, just about everything. With mother done. doing all this at the store, yeah. how, many, how many brothers and sisters did you have? Well, I had, my brother Howard passed away and three yes. sisters. So we, there were five of us. Five of you. So it was... Uh, no, was Howard older than you? Howard was four years older, yeah. Four years older. Yeah. yeah. Boy. Was, and we weren't, you know, we weren't like, we were, we caused some problems for our parents. <laughs> <you know? laughs> my, my brother would get into fights with my sister. The, you know, the store would be open on Friday and Saturday night. And my sisters would call into the store. And, and sometimes my parents would have to come home. Oh. To, and that was bad. If, the, if you bother them enough where they had to come home and settle a fight, yeah. that was not good. So, <laughs> yeah, that, that's your one. <laughs> Those are the days. Well, uh, how about, uh, how about, um, we briefly talked about your donations to the town. Um, we were talking a little bit about the tennis courts. The tennis oh, yeah. courts. Well, how did that get started? <laughs> well, Robert will tell the story about the tennis courts, but the high school didn't have tennis courts. I mean, high schools back in the 50s that didn't even think of tennis. Yeah, tennis wasn't popular. Well, the Levin family decided we will put a tennis court in their backyard, and they did. Yeah. And go from there. Well, my, my folks were uh, uh, avid tennis players and, and also avid gardeners. Yes. They had a huge garden, and uh, I'm sure you remember the days before uh, Frick Hospital built the oh, new, before, you know, yeah. When it was still on Main Street in, in 19, I think it was in 1963 You're that right. they expanded. But we had, you know, some land in the back. And uh, for exercise, my it was really squished in, didn't have much back space. But my, my parents put a tennis court in, in the back and basically in our, took out part of the garden in the backyard. Oh, was it a vegetable garden? Or a vegetable a garden. Flower garden. Vegetable okay. garden. You know, my, they were really, really into uh, growing their own vegetables and one of my first jobs as a kid was was in charge of pulling the carrots. 
So I got, got a big kick out of that. But anyway, so they put it, or, and there wasn't a, the um, uh, Ramsey, uh, this is also right at the time of, or no, actually it's a little bit after, uh, right, you know, when the, when the uh, juncture of Hearst and, and uh, Ramsey made the new high school. That would have been so, in the 60s. Back yeah. where they, when they still had, uh, uh, when Ramsey was the high school, they wanted a tennis program and they didn't have courts. My parents contributed to those courts. But while they were still being made or in the process of being constructed, there was a first year of the Mount Pleasant tennis team and there was no place to play. So they practiced at our courts. The team would practice. And one of the funny stories I remember is my parents would always play. They would take off Wednesday afternoons and they would come back and play tennis. And so there was there was a couple of kids on, on the court, and my parents said, uh, um, well, would it be okay if we play? And they said, you can't play here. This is the, this is the, 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 high, this school. Is the high school courts. <laughs> <laughs> and so my parents didn't want to make this. They said, okay, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> they just waited for them to be finished. But, uh, yeah, so, but, uh, you know, that house, that's, that's gone now. That was um, yeah. when the uh, yeah. Excel uh, expanded out there needed of the, the house and the land for Now you had support. mentioned you had mentioned about going to Chicago uh, to buy. Right? They was that you ago. went or your parents went? That was probably your six fifty five years ago. What happened is the from a manufacturing side, the uh, furniture business used to be have a lot of northeastern uh, a lot of businesses, a lot of companies were in New England and in Michigan, and so they had the furniture, the hub furniture market was in Chicago. But as production moved south into the Carolinas, then they moved the um, uh, markets into High Point, North Carolina, into Western, in Western North Carolina. And basically, and then, they, then we would go to that market. Then, then that, did you go with them? You know, I didn't. Uh, the I, I didn't. I, I was involved a little bit in the business uh, in high school. I was. Uh, did a little bit of selling. I didn't know what I was doing, but uh, you know, I was trying. And then I really wasn't involved until after my brother passed, uh, and then I came back into the business. And then I would go to the to the market with the buyers. I uh, did that for a while, and then basically turned over those responsibilities. When I look at this warehouse and the amount of stores that you have in the area. I have to say that you learned real quick. Yeah. Well, we had, I, you know, we had a great team. We had mm -hmm. a lot of great help, and uh, uh, just, uh, you know, took the opportunities. We uh, were pleased we were able to find the facility, or the we built here uh, in the industrial park right off of seventy, and then we put in a, a big addition on about ten years ago, 15, or twelve years ago. So. It's a, it's a big facility, can handle a lot of product, and um, that's um, one of the reasons why we're able to expand. How many employees do you have here, or in the, in the Levin business? Well, in the Levin business, uh, we are uh, over 800 employees now, so we're almost hmm. back to wow. the full strength, not quite, uh, but with the additions of the new stores that are going to be opening, and also the new locations in uh, Central Pennsylvania in Altoona and uh, State College will probably be back up to a thousand employees. Wow. Yeah, and a lot of folks work here in Smithton, so we have a lot of warehousemen. That's lot two of, good areas you're you're moving into to the Altoona and Johnstown area. Yeah, uh, because it's not. Well, we're not. We won't be in Johnstown. We'll be State College. State College and Altoona and Altoona. Mm -hmm. right, okay. right. So two good areas. Yeah, we're uh, yeah. we're hopeful and. Uh, you know, uh, it's still a very competitive business, and what we're finding, as everybody is finding, that a lot of the competition is online. So uh, people who want to shop can shop from Levin's online, but the vast majority of the business is still done in stores. People still, we feel, want to sit on something. Touch it. They, they want to yeah. see it. They want to touch it. They want to see if it's comfortable for them. Uh, you know, that, and we, provide a service and being able to do that. So be able, you, know, you, you can buy a mattress sight unseen, uh, but uh, you know, you really want to spend some time lying That's down right. on it and making sure it feels 
Oh, for you. yeah. Every, so, I think everyone lays on a mattress yeah. before they buy it. Not everybody. You'd be surprised. There are some people yeah. who don't. Yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, my wife and I, my wife likes a very firm mattress. I like a soft one. So we had to compromise. And we did find uh, something that we, we both really like a lot. So uh, but you have Levin's, to test it. So make sure you, you both like it. Levin's never got into lighting. Was that, was that by choice or was that just by well, tradition? We sell... Um, we do a big lamp business. Uh, right. I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm thinking more of fixtures light, overhead lights. To do some of that, it's not a big part of our business. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, some businesses become more specialty type of businesses. Uh, I mentioned earlier the appliance business um, used to be part of almost every furniture store. Almost every furniture store had appliances. Yeah. They sold uh, what were called uh, white goods, which were washers and dryers and ranges, and brown goods. Brown goods were televisions and consoles. Uh, huh. And But most furniture stores are now out of that business because that has become more specialized. Yeah, I had the white ones <laughs> and I had the brown <laughs> <Yeah>. ones. <laughs> it was a big business for us. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And they would always be breaking. So we'd always be sitting out oh, a, re you, you a repair guy. You always had good repair people. Yeah. Always. Uh, I'm, I, I always, I always get fascinated with what keeps a business alive for so long. So let's go back for a minute. Your grandfather, you mentioned him. You called him a peddler. Yeah, he was. Was that? Um, did he carry those? Uh, when I think of a peddler, I, I think of a negotiator, a, a barter, somebody who may, you know the, maybe the price is a hundred dollars, but he'll he'll negotiate a. Was that sort of his philosophy? Sure, and at, at that I think people in business that day did that. But you know, when you develop a trust, then people are just going to buy from. But I think here's a story I think you'll like to. So there's another story about my grandfather. When he was new to town, you know, it's all about relationships. Business is all about relationships, and you you want to feel comfortable with who you're buying from. So he would. Uh, go around when he had got his first car, and he would stop at every gas station in Mount Pleasant and buy a little bit of gas from each owner <laughs> so that he wasn't like just giving his business to, because one he wanted person. everybody's business. Yeah. So he got a little bit, you know, he felt go. like an eighth of a tank at one guy, and uh -huh. then he'd go and drive to the next person, <laughs> buy a little gas from him, and you know, introduce himself, and. Talk. Well, the that was that was networking back then. Was networking. The other thing is, my my uh, grandparents spoke a lot of different languages. They, you know, they came from Poland, so they 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 uh, spoke uh, Polish. They spoke Slovak. They learned to speak back in the days when a lot of people their first language was not English. So it's a great another gr way to communicate and make people feel comfortable. Years ago, was to speak in somebody's original yeah. language. So that was another interesting thing about them. Your grandfather lived on the corner of Hitchman and Main. That's right. And that house is still, still very there. occupied. Yeah. You know? yeah. And well is that the yellow one? Yep. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. So yeah. yeah, that's where all my uh, my my dad, my all my aunts grew up in that house. See, I bring the burr manager with me so I can educate. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have to be around for 50, 50 years to know all this. But, yeah. Well, so, okay, so now that leads me to another question. What do you think the three, four major, I don't want to say things, but I can't think of another word, the four major things that have made Levin's a success on a timeline? I mean, your grandfather moving to Mount Pleasant. Yeah. Uh, maybe it was Howard. Mm -hmm. You know, I think expanding. Uh, what What were some of those? I think that the leaders of the company uh, have been good businessmen. Businessmen. So my grandfather was a good businessman. My father and my, my mother were. Oh, they ran the company for many years. They were good at many different things. You need to be good at the merchandising. You know, selecting the product. Selling, service, customer relations, um, advertising is really important. And then my my brother Howard was a very good businessman as well too, and uh, aggressive. So you know, taking advantage of opportunities, whether they're real estate opportunities to open up new stores, 
Uh, you know, in, in today's day and age, you, you have to promote your business. You have to be um, you know, typically on television. Now it's um, online and social media is a way that people promote their businesses now. You have to be and a you step have, ahead. You have to have a presence and people have to see you because what happens is that people will only think of furniture or mattresses when they're in the market. If they're not interested, you're, the ads just kind of, you're not paying attention. Yeah. But when they're interested, then they have to see you. So you have to advertise constantly. Some people say we advertise too much. Well, we advertise enough to get the, the customers. So I would say it's leadership. Um, uh, marketing is another critical component. And then the third one, which is probably the most important one, is the people that you have working for you. You want people who are competent, who are dedicated, uh, who are going to stay with your business uh, so you don't have a lot of turnover. Yeah. And uh, we've been blessed by having a great group of very, very dedicated employees over the years. I was thrilled that when we got back into business, just about everybody, uh, not everybody, but most of the folks came back. And uh, you know, to have those people back is really very meaningful for us. Well, yeah. Oh, excuse me. No, go ahead. You're uh, also, people get used to a salesperson that they go back to all the time. Sure. And yeah. that salesperson is there yeah. because they don't leave. Yeah. And, and uh, if you look at our Mount Pleasant store uh, when we're back, you're going to see some folks, you know, D obviously at 50 years. I mean, oh, that's a long uh, time. But we've got other folks that have been with the company for over 30 years. So um, there is that familiarity that comes when you, uh, especially in a small town. Yeah. That's important. Well, I think uh, on the opening day, uh, we're going to have a, a short parade from up, down, down. <laughs> So we can line the streets up, and then the, 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 the crowds can come right into the stores. Okay. <laughs> you got it. Well, speaking of parades. We love parades. Yeah. You know that. Well, speaking of parades, you yeah. know who the Grand Marshal Oh, for the glass festival. For the glass festival. Yeah. I mean, we've been asking Robert for years. Well, and he, now always, <laughs> he always was out of town. <laughs> he's, got a, he's committing today to it again. I can tell you... <laughs> well, I'll it's, tell you, when we're off camera, <laughs> I'm going to tell you a funny comment my mother made about, she was a grand marshal on a parade. She was. Uh -huh. Yep. So, uh, do you have the ability to edit? Or, okay, well, so, you won't, might want to edit this out. I asked, so how was, uh, how was the parade? And, you know, in a very self-deprecating, modest way, because she really enjoyed it a lot, she said, I was the horse's ass behind the horse's ass. <laughs> <laughs> so there must have been, you know, like a oh, <laughs> horse drawn. I, I remember and she that. was behind, you know, she was behind it. So uh, I was the I horse's ass behind the carriage. horse's ass. I but thought that was she, a great comment. She could have been in the carriage because we had the carriage. We had a carriage. I think we did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what she said. Uh, so. Uh, 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 How I are think we going to leave that in? Or, or, you, yeah, or, we're, we're, I think we can leave that in. Well, yeah, why not? Yeah. Little, I don't think anybody's going to be a fan. Everyone who knew your mother would have a good laugh <laughs> at that. People, the people who knew my mother will appreciate that yeah. comment. Your mother she told father, it like it is. Your mother and father also was active in other things in the community. Yeah, Not just running so. the store. Yeah. But they were very... And like your, your mother... Uh, Bill Patoka, who I you know, uh, succeeded, uh, always said that if you want a good story written, you go to Sally Lou. Yeah, well, you know, she helped uh, help with uh, Westmoreland County Community College. Yeah. That was a great initiative. And yeah. uh, Westmoreland County Art Museum and, you know, the institutions, there were a lot of institutions that were very meaningful to, to my parents being, growing up. My mother was born in Mount Pleasant. She grew up in Connellsville, but she was born in Mount Pleasant. And uh, so you have those connections you want to support. What was mother's maiden name? Marshall. Marshall. That was a tragic story. Uh, my Both of my mother's parents died before she finished her fifth, she was, before she was five years old. Oh. Both of cancer. 
separately of diseases that nowadays would be treatable. But uh, they both passed away, and um, she was brought up by her aunt and uncle in Connellsville. And um, uh, that was her story. So. And you orphaned. said the Connellsville store, Levin's, was run by your uncle? My aunt and uncle. So okay. when my, you know, having six kids, uh, my grandfather was trying to help out, and so he uh, opened up a Levin furniture for my uh, oldest aunt and her husband to run in Connellsville, right on Pittsburgh Street. It's called Sam Levin Furniture Company. Mm -hmm. And then when my uncle passed away, he was young. Uh, he had a heart attack in his mid-50s, and so my aunt was trying to run the business, and it was just too much for her. So then my father agreed to take it over. So um, it was part of Levin Furniture. Uh, it was separate. It was its own separate company mm -hmm. back then. Uh, but then it became part of Levin Furniture. And then another store, probably people don't know this side of the family, but uh, uh, he also helped uh, another one of his daughters, uh, Thelma Levin, Thelma Levin Angerman, open up a store in um, McKeesport that was named after her children, my cousins, called R&J Furniture. And uh, that, was the, that was the last furniture retailer to still be in business in the city of McKeesport. Whoa. <laughs> so um, he had a good run, just closed it in 2002, I think. So there was some history of, uh, of uh, other members of the family getting into the furniture business as well. So. You've had so much success. I'm going to throw a little curveball at you here. Okay. <laughs> but give me something that you remember or something that you, that you tried it and it just didn't work. Have you had any of those stories? Sure. I mean, there's always going to be uh, products that you bring on to the, uh, to the uh, showroom floor that aren't successful and that's why you have clearance sales. <laughs> and uh, you, know, you, get, you get rid of those. Uh, or, you know, you open in locations that uh, uh, demographics uh, change and then so you have to uh, make a change in, in the business. We, um, I was really excited about it because it was our first mattress location. We had a, uh, we had a mattress store right on Forbes Avenue, right in Squirrel Hill, right in my neighborhood. Yeah. We actually had a fire there. Too, but uh, we've had a lot of fires. Fire. Yeah, a lot of fires in fire our, fire our company. But uh, we had opened up a, a, a store in um, Shady Side, and uh, that took all the business from the one in um, in, in Squirrel Hill. So we had to close that store. So, so you have those situations where stores, uh, you know, aren't successful. Products that you bring onto the floor, uh, you hope that people will buy them, but sometimes they Was don't. Is there any style that that you can think of? Well, you have styles that have come and gone in terms of uh, uh, business. Um, you know, in the 1960s, my parents opened up, uh, f older folks will remember, the Colonial House. The Colonial House was a oh Williamsburg-style yes, yes. uh, townhouse uh, that was uh, designed with uh, uh, 18th-century furniture, with, you know, Queen Anne-style cabriolet furniture, uh, and... Uh, was a wonderful success. There's a story behind why that opened. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but there used to be a Levin furniture that was not related to us. Same last name, but they had a furniture store in Greensburg and one in Jeanette. Huh. Yeah, and when my dad that. wanted to expand the advertising, he wanted to advertise in the Greensburg Tribune, but he didn't want to advertise his Levin furniture because he thought that would confuse uh, customers, which it would have. They would have gone to the store in Greensburg thinking yeah, that it was right there. Mount Pleasant Levin. Yeah. It wasn't. So that's when he came up with the idea of having a separate, uh, same same business, but a separate kind of marquee that was focused on um, uh, early American furniture called the Colonial House. Colonial and House. it was at the time when that was very, very popular. Uh, probably the majority of people, and some people probably still have it in their home, the wingback chair, uh, uh, sofas and chairs, uh, uh, a lot of cherry, uh, occasional tables, uh, and was a very, very popular style. Uh, in the last 20 years, that style has become less popular in American homes. People are buying more 
um, casual contemporary style. So styles change over time, uh, and it's really interesting to see how that how that occurs. Was the store ever called Sam Levin? Sam Levin Furniture Company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, when my, when my dad was a little kid, he would read the name backwards, Sam Levin Furniture Company, C-O, period. And he called it, it was Oki Root and Rough and Nibble Mice, <laughs> which is Sam Levin Furniture Company backwards. And when he was seven years old, he memorized that, and that's how he would, he would call the company. He read the, the letters backwards. <laughs> so, uh. yeah, but... A lot, uh, lot of water under the under the dam over the last hundred so years, right? Oh we have about five minutes left. Okay. It goes quick, doesn't it? When it you does. Sit around. Where's the future going for Sam? For a well, bit? I mentioned uh, in the first segment that I have two terrific partners, uh, young men, considerably younger than me, uh, who are my partners in the business, a uh, family-run business. So there's there's going to be you know a future in terms of ownership because at some point, you know, I'll you know, decide to, you It's know, something that's not going back. to end. But, uh, so we have a really, and we have a, a great management team here at the company. Uh, we, uh, you know, we own our facility here in Smithton. That's always a positive. Uh, we're the market leader in uh, the markets that we we're in. So we dominant market share in Pittsburgh and also in Cleveland. Uh, and um, we see a very, I see a very bright future. Uh, it's well capitalized. Uh, we, uh, you know, financially, the company is is starting off at a very strong footing. So uh, all things are really set up for continued success. Having said that, you never can sit on your laurels. You never can take business for granted. You have to maintain the relationships with customers. Your best customer is an existing customer, yeah. not a new customer. That's, That's right. right. That it's is very expensive right. to acquire new, <coughs> new new customers. You want to make sure that you're getting your repeat business, uh, but you never know. I mean, things change, uh, businesses come and go, but I think we're in a very good position good. relative to other uh, other businesses in our in our market. The big the big. Uh, uh, challenge going forward would be to, to be able to compete effectively with the uh, online merchants, with the Amazons of the world, uh, the ones that uh, are not a community-based business, but there's a lot of people because of convenience that will shop. Oh, them. they go online. Yeah, yeah. It's very simple to do that. So but you have, offer all those services too. Absolutely, and more. And you have to do, you have to yeah. be you have to do better, really. Yeah. Uh, and you do that through the through the personalized service through people feeling that they can put a name to a face. But what you have the upper hand is you have a lot of stores and like you said earlier, <coughs> people can come in and sit on a sofa or sit on a mattress right. and see how it feels. That's the advantage. That's, that's the advantage that a brick and mortar yeah. store has over the online. But you also but online is a way that people like to shop too. So you have oh, to yeah. be able to do that. Well they can look online and then go to the store. And, right. and, they, and they can order set. online as well. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's a, it's a hybrid process. They'll go into the store, establish a relationship, uh, think about it, try to decide what they want, and then they'll communicate sometimes by phone or sometimes through texting. You know, there's all these new tools that are oh, available yeah. Yeah. for a sales associate, too, to use. So that salesperson can video chat with the customer, yeah. can take photos of products that are on the floor in the showroom, and send a video. Yeah. I mean, that's the, the future is using all of those resources to, to make a sale. And well, Robert, we're out of time. Okay. Thank you for doing two shows This was for us really back back. a lot of fun because it made me think of things that I haven't thought about in a while. <laughs> so, well, but I'm it's sure. going to be great to celebrate. We'll have that parade. Yeah. That's right. And I'm sure. I want to see the cars come <laughs> over the top of the hill. Well, I'm sure our watchers and listeners will feel great about coming to Levin's because it'll be the same Levin that it used to be. Yeah. You carry on those traditions and those philosophies. Yeah. So, Jerry, uh, this, Final was word? Good, this was a good one. Final word? Go Levin's. Welcome. <laughs> go to Levin's, but welcome back to Mount Pleasant. Thank you so much. Okay. So it for, is great to be back. So, for Jerry and Robert... This is Jeff saying thanks for watching and listening to the Jeff and Jerry Show, and we'll see you next time.